Good afternoon. Uh, good day. Good day to you, friends and partners. Good good day to everyone, friends and partners all over the world. It's my pleasure again. This is uh, Dr. Israel Leiden, and um, it's my pleasure to welcome you again to another session of Insight for the Leading Edge. Insight for the Leading Edge. And today we are believing God to come through for us and impart our lives to fulfilling our destiny with excellence. In Jesus' mighty name, let us pray. Father in heaven, we appreciate you this morning. Uh, and wherever they are in the afternoon uh, in other parts of the world, Lord, we're asking that you speak to us. Let your word, O oh God, bring impartation and transformation and divine enablement for every hearer to fulfill their destiny with excellence in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Grant us understanding of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. You're welcome to this uh, other, another edition or session of uh, Insight for the Leading Edge. And today, the title of our uh, message, the message of God that I'll be sharing with you, is titled, You Cannot Play a Second Fiddle to the Usurper of Your Destiny. You cannot. You cannot play a second fiddle to the Usurper of Your Destiny. And the main text <clears throat> for this uh, teaching session can be fetched from the book of uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter 38. Genesis 38 is the story of uh, Tamar. Tamar. Tamar was the wife of the first son of Judah who died. And he could not bring forth an heir that will inherit uh, the, 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 the uh, throne of Judah because Judah was a prince. So the, the father advised uh, the second born, his second son, to take uh, the, the the wife of his brother, so that they can bring forth an heir for the late brother. But that didn't work out, and because of the wickedness of the two sons, God killed them. The Bible said God killed them, and uh, God orchestrated everything. The wife of uh, Judah died, and by divine providence. Uh, Judah had a, an affair with uh, Tamar, and Tamar brought forth. Uh, no, he, she became pregnant with two two uh, sons. He was pregnant uh, with twins, and that's the story we're going to consider this morning. And the Lord is going to use it to illumine our eyes of understanding uh, for us to lead uh, a life. You know. A quality a life of quality and rich fulfillment uh, no, of, of destiny in Jesus mighty name so Genesis 38 I'll be reading from verse 27 to 30 Genesis 38 verses 27 through 30 now it came to pass at the time of giving birth at the time that uh, time I was to bring forth that behold, twins were in a womb, and it was, and so it was, when she was giving birth, that one put out his hand, and the midwife took a scarlet, a scarlet thread, and bound it on his hand, saying, "This one came at first. Verse twenty-nine. Then it happened as he drew back his hand, that his brother came. Out unexpectedly, and she said, That is the midwife said, How did you break through this breach be upon you? Therefore, his name was called Perez. Afterward, his brother came out who had the scarlet thread on his hand, and his name was called Zera. Zera. So we thank God for this. Uh, insightful uh, message this morning so we can see here uh, Tama 
was pregnant with twins. I will need a background for this uh, story so that uh, we can get uh, the full understanding of the message of God to us today that is going to uh, bring a kind of a change of uh, many perspectives and bring a kind of transformation and radical change that will positively impact our lives and destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Now, let me say, first and foremost, talk of Judah. Judah had a prophetic uh, declaration upon his life from his father. Uh, his father, Jacob. Jacob said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. That is Genesis chapter 49 verse 10. Scepter is talking of, it's a symbol of a king's rulership, dominion. You know, king over a kingdom. So, and uh, Jacob had a kingdom. He, had, he received an inheritance of a kingdom from God. And this kingdom is the kingdom of God on earth. We're going to trace it to, from uh, Jacob to Adam, the first man. That God created. Now, Jacob he wrestled with God in Genesis. In the book of Genesis, he wrestled with God to, and when he wrestled with God to receive the blessing, and that blessing is the blessing of the inheritance of a kingdom. And uh, God changed his name from Jacob unto Israel, which is a prince with God and men. So he became a prince, a prince. A hair apparent of God. So, but let's quickly trace it to Adam and we'll come back to Jacob. Jacob to Judah and uh, Judah to Christ. And it's going to uh, make a very, no, it's going to be very meaningful to us as we trace that uh, uh, no, divine history in the name of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> in the book of uh, Genesis, when God created uh, Adam and Eve, God gave uh, the, the you know, he created Adam and Eve and put them in a garden, the Garden of Eden. And from there, God wants Adam to govern the whole world, to govern the earth, to be in charge of all that He created. As a matter of fact, He gave names to all the creations of God: the animals, the the trees, you know, animals in the sea. Uh, the aquatic uh, creatures, everything that God created. And the name that he gave them was the name that God uh, endorsed and ratified. So he was in charge. Mm -hmm. And that's why the son is by the spirit of Christ in him, in Psalm, uh, Psalm 2. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly see Psalm 2. You no know, pointing to what happened in Eden. Uh, uh, Adam had dominion. God gave him the kingdom and dominion. The whole earth was his uh, territory. Was his uh, jurisdiction. God gave him to govern the whole earth, but he lost it. Psalm 2, let's read here from verse 4. Psalm 2, read him from verse 4 of Psalm 2. Uh, verse, from verse 4 now. Psalm, Psalm number 2. Psalm 2, oh, sorry, Psalm 8. Sorry, Psalm 8. Read him from 4. Psalm number 8. Psalm 8. Reading from verse 4 through 6. He said, What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. He's talking of God's visitation in Eden. God always come to fellowship with Adam and Eve in the garden. Garden of Eden. You have made him a little lower than angels. The word translated in Jesus means Elohim. You created him a little lower than God. That is... The, the way the man was created, the frame, we are made out of dust. You know? So, not like angels that are, we have human limitations because of the body. But angels have no uh, physical body. You know? They can move in a, you know, in a twinkle of an eye. They are from one, no, from one uh, uh, continent to the other. So, but we have human limitations. That's what he's saying there. He says, and the son of man that you visit him. You know, God's so mindful of us. He cares for us. He loves us. So that's what the psalm is saying. Mm -hmm. Now, you have made me a little lower than the angels or Elohim, and I've crowned him with glory and honor. The honor, kingly, royal uh, glory and honor to be in church. 
Verse uh, 6 now. Uh, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Glory to God. So when God created man, he gave man dominion. The kingdom and the dominion. The whole earth. Govern the whole earth. Govern the whole earth. You know, so let's see Psalm. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Turn with me to Psalm 115. Reading there verse 16. Psalm 115 verse 16 says, The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Glory to God. So God put man in charge here on earth to govern the earth and to have dominion over all the works of his hand. The fish, every you know, sea creatures, the aquatic creatures in the atmosphere, everywhere, just to be in charge. But man lost that dominion because of simple disobedience unto God. So the key to maintaining our dominion is obedience unto God. So man, humankind, through the first Adam, lost that dominion because we disobeyed the voice of God and listened to the usurper, the usurper of the authority and dominion and the honor and the glory that God gave to man. Satan is the usurper. That's what we're going this morning. They, now you know the usurper is Satan. And the first mind, the mind of God from um, humankind, for us to govern the earth and to have dominion. And Satan came and stole that through disobedience. We lost it. So there was the need for another Adam. Another Adam who will now restore the kingdom and the dominion back to humankind. And God now had a plan in place. Because God knew beforehand what was going to happen. Because Satan was a free moral agent and he chose to ruin his own life and destiny. You know, So God had a plan in, in place. And God started implementing that plan through a, a man that was completely obedient unto God. In the name of the person of Abraham. Glory to God. And God promised Abraham that I will make you the heirs of the earth, the inheritor of the earth, to restore back what he, uh, you know, the authority and dominion that was given to uh, the first Adam. Now God plans to restore it back. And he gave that promise unto Adam and to his offspring. He says, unto you and to your seed. It is a seeds. Is pointing unto Christ, the seed of uh, Abraham according to the flesh. So we can see on the book of uh, Romans, Romans chapter four, <clears throat> Romans chapter four, God promised uh, Abraham concerning this uh, the, the 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 dominion, restoration of that dominion over uh, you know, the earth, Romans. Chapter 4, verse 13. Romans 4, verse 13. Verse 13 of Romans 4. It says, For the promise that he will be the heir. He's talking of Abraham now. Let me read from verse 12 so that you can uh, know he's talking about of Abraham. Verse 12 says, And the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith, which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. Continuation of verse 13. For the promise that he would be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through righteousness of faith. I pray that you embrace this righteousness of faith in Christ Jesus so you can be a beneficiary mm -hmm. of this uh, dominion that uh, Christ uh, no, that uh, no, God promised Abraham and uh, no, that he will restore unto humankind and that was executed and uh, no, delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ, by the death and resurrection of Christ. So that's what he's saying. So uh, verse 13 there, that Abraham is going to be the inheritor, the heir of the whole earth. 
And we've seen Psalm uh, 115, verse 16, that the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men, not to Satan. You know? But the Satan was the usurper. He took over from the, uh, no, from, from Abraham. Sorry, he stole it from Abraham. I'm sorry, from Adam. And he became the prince of this world. Adam at that time was the prince of the world. Before Satan came and stole a new shop authority. That authority took the you know, stole it from him. And that's why Christ came and you know, made us, he reinforced it to let us know that Satan, uh, you no, know, he stole that uh, dominion. He was, a, you know, he's an usurper. And Christ came so that he can, uh, you know, destroy him and take away, you no, know, and take back from him that which he has stolen from humankind. And that's why you can see in the book of uh, John's Gospel, John's Gospel, chapter 12. John's Gospel, chapter 12. John's Gospel, chapter number 12. Read me verse 31. John's Gospel, chapter 12. Verse 31. Verse 31. This is the word of Christ. He said, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out, or the prince of this world. The prince, another version says, the prince of this world, the ruler. The ruler of this world. Satan is the ruler of this world. And he takes people captive. That's what the Bible says. Against their will. There's no human that is capable to withstand or resist the devil. Every human is vulnerable, very vulnerable to the devil. So, but when you are born again, you become a child of God. You are a different species of humankind. You know, that authority is restored back onto you. And you can subdue the devil. Keep him under your feet. This is what we're saying. This morning. But that's why you need to be born again. So you can fully fulfill your destiny. In this, uh, you know, in Christ. In, in, the, in the world. So, uh, John's Gospel, 14, verse 30. Just to corroborate what we have read in uh, John's Gospel, 12, 31. For John's Gospel, 14. Verse 30, Christ says, I will no longer talk much with you, speaking to the disciples. For the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. The devil is ruler of this world. Let me read another scripture to you. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Also, establish that Satan is the prince of this world. Ephesians chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who walks in the sons of disobedience. Hallelujah. The devil is known as the prince of the power of the air, the prince of this world, the ruler of this world. The world has been judged. It's awaiting you know, the fulfillment of that judgment. Because uh, in the execution of that judgment, when everything will be burnt away with fire, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. It's in the Bible. The word of God. So, the, Satan is the ruler over the children of disobedience. So, the first Adam disobeyed God and reproduced children of disobedience. Because that the disobedience and rebellion to the things of God is in our DNA. So, but we need to be born again. So, there can be a regeneration. Complete change. Born anew, so that you now you are now born of God. That's what the Bible says. John John's Gospel chapter one verse thirteen. So I now carry the DNA of God. You are not struggling to obey God, but if you are struggling, still struggling to obey uh, God, that means there is a problem. You need to be purged, and that's why you need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire for the fire of God to burn all those things that are you no know, residue of the old man. You have to become a new man. If any man be in Christ, a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You have to be in Christ. So that's what happened. So uh, God promised Abraham that I'm going to restore back that dominion to you. You're going to be the heir of the world. You and your seed and your offspring. And, Christ, and it's pointing, pointing on to Christ. Christ now, because that, that, that uh, restoration of that dominion that Adam lost in the Garden of Eden, dominion over the whole earth, no, God had a plan. The plan started with Abraham. Abraham, 
Because Abraham was obedient. And from there you can trace the uh, lineage of Christ, his genealogy, you know, down to Joseph and uh, you know, and to Christ. So that was saying this morning. And that promise of God, of that kingdom, was uh, fulfilled by Jacob. Jacob was born a twin. A twin. He was a twin. His twin brother was uh, you know, Esau. But while they were in the womb, God said, I favor. I, you know, Esau, Esau, I hate Jacob. I love. Hallelujah. God is sovereign. You cannot quote God. So now that was God saying, I favor Jacob to, uh, you know, to, to receive the blessing of the kingdom. And God always uses things to, for us to learn, for, to teach us that there are two species of humankind and two kingdoms here on earth. Because when uh, Rebecca was uh, pregnant with uh, uh, the uh, pregnancy of uh, Esau and Jacob, God said two kingdoms were in that uh, womb. So we have the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. So if you are not yet born again, you belong to the kingdom of darkness. Because Christ is the light of the world. You embrace Christ, you are in the light. I'm not here to condemn you, but I'm just telling you the truth. And at times the truth may be bitter, you know. But you can open your mind and uh, receive this word of God. You have a divine encounter. That will, you know, you will, uh, you know, your encounter that will change your life completely and change the way you see things. Your understanding will be opened. So, that was happened. So, now, and anything that is good, there's always a struggle. The enemy will struggle with it. So, there was twins there. And uh, God favored him. Just to call a long story short. Uh, Jacob was in a trouble. Uh, was, was, was in trouble at that time. Because his brother wants to take vengeance. For that uh, blessing that he stole. The bat, birthright. You know, birthright. The firstborn takes the birthright. The right to the throne. The right to the inheritance of the kingdom. So that was what uh, Jacob took. Uh, uh, Esau came first. Esau, he had a birthright. But he sold his own birthright. No, you must not sell your birthright. You, know, you must not sell your birthright. Every human will have a birthright to govern the earth, to be the heir apparent of, the, of God Almighty. We are the heir, heir, heirs of God. So when the devil came and stole it, Christ came to restore it. But people, because of uh, what um, mundane things, temporal things, money, fame, things that will perish with the world, the Bible says they have vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. They find it difficult to surrender to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Things standing between them and God, they become an idol. Things that, anything that will make you not to surrender to Christ become an idol in your life. You have to seek for the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Everything that is trying to stand in your way, they are just fringe benefits. But we get that understanding. So, now, Jacob now wrestled with God. In the book of Genesis. He wrestled with God. That's what the Bible tells us. And overnight, he wrestled with God. And God changed his name from Jacob to a prince. Prince with God and men, Israel. And this same man that has received the kingdom, the spiritual kingdom, kingdom that God has promised for the future, Restoration of God's kingdom on earth, which is in the future, that will be fulfilled with, uh, by, uh, no, through Christ. That same man, by the endowment of God over his life, by the prophetic uh, utterance as God's oracle, he made that declaration over Judah. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 10, he said, The scepter shall not be departed from Judah, nor the Lord, Lord give up between his feet until Shiloh come, and until the garden of the people be. So, Judah received that. Uh, mandate and receive that blessing to be the heir of that future kingdom and so therefore when Tama became pregnant it was a pregnancy of destiny anyone that comes first has a better right to take over that uh you no know, rulership that uh, you know that rulership that is where uh, you know that uh, judah had the rulership that god has promised the rulership of christ in the future so there was that struggle. And uh, you know, when it was time for them to give birth, the, the uh, Zerah brought out his uh, hand. His hand came out first. And because of that, the uh, midwife 
join into conclusion and say, yeah, that's it. It's over. And I'm telling you this morning, it's not over until it's over. Glory to God. God is going to come through for you. So, Sarah, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah, sorry, Sarah brought us his hand. And the midwife, what is it? Who is a midwife? Someone who assists an, a woman in bringing forth when it's time for pregnancy to assist. So there can be, when that, ma when that, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, delivery is not that uh, complicated. The woman is there to assist. Even before the pregnancy of uh, birth, midwives are always there, you know, checking all those things to make sure that the uh, pregnant woman is doing what she ought to do. They call it a uh, prenatal, you know, uh, checkups and all those stuff, so that by the time she will bring forth it, she will bring forth with ease. And when she is bringing forth, they will be there to assist also. And it's like a help of destiny. Amen. Yeah, they help of destiny. The Bible says, when people uh, you know, resist you, people are supposed to be uh, your helpers of destiny, and they say, no, this one is a, the guy is a write-off. It's a second fiddle in life. You cannot make anything. So they just write you off. Because God will not jump down from heaven. He uses people. No, there's no self-made man. There are people that God brings your way to help you to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. But when they see... Uh, some, see some things and they just uh, you know, because they, they observe also when they observe something and say well this one is a write off so they close their mind in doing what God want them to do as an intervention in your life to get you to where you need to get you so that's uh, the place of this uh, woman the, uh, uh, the uh, midwife when she saw the hand of Sarah out he said well this one is the firstborn he has a bad right the other one with the second fiddle he doesn't have the bed right because only one person takes the bed right. And she concluded. And I'm telling you this morning, under the sound of my voice, there's no man that can draw conclusion over your life if you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The helper for the chief helper of our destiny. He will help you to fulfill the purpose of God for your life, no matter the challenges. That's what I'm saying this morning. No, but if you don't have Christ, people can conclude and finish with you, and that's it. You have you have the power to overcome that obstacle, to the power to torpedo, the power to overcome that usurper of your destiny. So Zerah was an usurper of the destiny of uh, you no know, uh, Perez. Perez is the man that had the destiny to take the birthright that we you know from Judah. The birthright of that uh, with the kingdom and rulership with God promise through Abraham. As we saw in uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 13. Okay. So now Bible says that at the time at the point in time, Zerah withdrew his hands. <laughs> that, that's a divine intervention. I pray for a divine intervention for you this morning. So that you can be you no, know, you'll be able to receive what it takes for you to fulfill your destiny with in grand style in the name of Jesus. You need that favor. Bible says, He that covers his sin shall not prosper. But he that confess and forsake shall obtain mercy, favor. Uh, but there are some religious saying, they tell, well, you don't just be confessing your sin. You don't need to forsake your sin. Just confess your sin every week. Come to the priest. Come to the priest and confess your sin. Just go on com com committing sin. You know, but it's so clear in the scriptures. You cannot walk against the word of God. Anything that is not granted in the word of God, you know, it's uh, just falsehood. Bible says in the book of uh, the Proverbs there, 28 verse 13. He said, uh, He that confesses sin, uh, he, he that covers it shall not prosper. But he that confesses and forsakes, if you just confess, don't forsake, uh, he doesn't know, you don't get the blessing. He that confesses and forsakes shall obtain mercy. So if this morning, if you have confessed all your sins and make, make, determined to forsake them, God will come true for you and give you the power to go and sin no more. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So that was happened. So God came through for Perez to his favor. Divine providence. So the guy that was trying to, uh, the twin brother that was trying to usurp his, uh, his blessing, the blessing of birthright, his destiny, withdrew his hands. And immediately he broke forth. Hallelujah. That's why they call his name Perez. Perez means to break forth, to burst forth, burst forth, burst forth, or break through. I decree breakthrough for you. It gives every obstacle to your destiny in every area of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
So that was the name. The name of Perez is the uh, interpretation is breakthrough or burst forth. So he broke through. You know, you got, even the guy did not, his uh, twin brother did not withdraw his hand. He wouldn't be able to break through. So God cleared out of, of that upset because he's, uh, he was favored for the birthright. And you need to accept Christ. Christ is the heirs of God. You need to accept Christ so you can be, enjoy that favor of that uh, uh, right. Hallelujah. Let's see the book of Romans. Romans chapter 20, uh, chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Talking about the uh, the heirship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Reading there from verse 14. Verse 14 of Romans chapter 8. Verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they, these are sons of God. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of uh, adoption, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father is a, and, uh, no, it's a word that talks about you know, uh, someone who is, Abba, Father means my father, you know, somebody who is a legitimate son. He, an illegitimate son cannot just say, Abba, Father. Abba, Abba Father. So we are adopted through Christ to be the true sons of the living God. Verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. When you are born again, you will know it. Those who don't born again, they don't know. They know that they are not born again. You got to be born again. I have the witness in you. I pray that even encounter for you this morning so you can fulfill your destiny with excellence in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 17. And if children... Then heirs, if you are a child of God, then you are heirs of God. That's what I say. And, and, and then heirs, heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. Hallelujah. I don't know what you are going through. Kind of suffering and challenges is to bring out the glory of God in your life. It's like gold. But I say the trial of our faith is like gold that passes through fire. Gold has to pass through fire. So the impurities will be burnt off. So that the beauty and the splendor of gold will come alive. The beauty of gold. That's it. That's the trial of our faith. Have you, do you have faith in Christ? And you are trying to train the towel? Because of the challenges you are facing, don't give up. God is working on something glorious in your life. In the name of Jesus. But if you don't have faith in Christ, that person is like a, a, a straw or stubble or paper. They go through the fire and they get burnt. But when you are a child of God, faith in Christ, Bible says you are like gold that passes through fire. No matter the challenges you are facing, you're going to come through, uh, come out glorious, better than you were before. In the name of Jesus, that's the uh, encouragement from the Word of God, and it's, so it's been proven in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we are joined heads with Christ. That is with Christ. That's why it's in the Bible it says, "Israel is my firstborn. I brought Israel out of Egypt when Pharaoh was persecuting and oppressing." Uh, the children of Israel, God told him, "You are, you are, you, know, you are fiddling with my own firstborn. You cannot meddle with the affairs of my children. Let, let my people go. Let them go to serve me. And if you don't let them go, Israel is my firstborn. I will kill all your firstborn." And that was what happened. The firstborn in Egypt, they were all killed. Because trying to, uh, you know, he didn't uh, give regard to the firstborn of God. The whole. Kingdom, God said, I was the firstborn. Israel is my firstborn. Christ is a kingdom, kingdom of God on earth, Christ. And that's why Christ, when he was born, when Herod wanted to kill him, he was taken to Egypt to fulfill that word of God that out of Egypt I brought my, forth my son. Hallelujah. So this is what he's saying. So Christ is the firstborn of God. He's the firstborn that he not is my preeminence, the first begotten of God. That in all this is my preeminence. God became human and we call him the son of God. So when you accept Christ, you become adopted. Hallelujah. True children of God. You become joint heads with Christ. The restoration of that uh, dominion and authority. The dominion and authority to govern the world, earth. That I first Adam lost. Christ came to the plan that God made from Abraham. To restore back to humankind that dominion and authority. And that's why it's a crisis going you into all the world, all powers in heaven and earth. All authority in heaven and earth given unto me. Go. Bind the devil. You, you suffer. I bind the devils that try to usurp your destiny this morning in the name of Jesus. 
I set you free under the sound of my voice by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the authority in the name of Jesus, go free and start to break through and do exploit and fulfill your uh, you know, destiny in grand style and with excellence. In Jesus' mighty name, you need that power. The power of the Son of God. To other receive, you get the power to become the sons of God. When you are children of the sons of God, that means you are children. Children of God, you are heirs of God. Joint us with Christ. Hallelujah. He put all things under his feet to subdue the earth. To subdue the devil and the forces of darkness. All the evil you see in the world. The killings, wickedness, man wickedness to fellow, fellow human. These are the works of the devil. Nobody in, the, in their own right mind. Some people they don't have quarrel with their wives or husband. They just kill their spouse. Wickedness. And it's like that you say, then some of them say, well, they, they, they have some mental problem. No, it's a spiritual problem. It's something beyond mental. You know, someone want to hide under that, uh, you know, say they have mental problem. No, it's beyond mental. Or some people just take, grab the gun and start to kill people. As we see, gun violence. And they say that person has mental problem. No, these are spiritual things. The devil wrecking havoc. The Lord help us in just mighty name. So that's what happened to uh, Perez. Perez broke through the obstacle. And he came out first. He refused to become the second fiddle. Of you know to the shop of his destiny, but God helped him because his, his uh, twin brother that brought out his hand first and had his scarlet tied to around his hand to say that this is the one that uh, has the bet right. He, he he now became the first, second fiddle, and I pray that the Lord will favor you this morning. Power will change hands to your favor. All the powers of the enemy that is trying to make you a second fiddle of your destiny in life, the power of God will crush them this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus. What is that destiny? It's to be the, the, like Christ. That's the destiny of every child of every other thing will be a free benefit. That's why it's in the book of uh, uh, Matthew's Gospel. Chapter 6. From verse 31 to 33. Christ is trying to tell us and the disciples. That don't allow it to steal away. Steal this destiny from you. The destiny is the kingdom. Verse 33 says. No, don't let the things just uh, no from 31 verse 31. He said, Don't let the things that people crave for fame, material things, money, whatever the pleasures and the treasures of the world. Don't let that those things steal from you the kingdom. Let your focus and your pursuit be the possession of the kingdom. When you possess the kingdom, every other thing will come into alignment. And I pray this morning. Every one of them has accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Let everything start to come into alignment and to answer to your favor at this time. It's because you have to feel that law. I'm telling you, things are going to change in your life if you give your life to Christ. Things that are becoming pretty difficult for you to be able to achieve. You start to see them happen. There's going to be a divine intervention for you. As it's happened for Perez, the usurper of his destiny, Zera, the twin brother, mm -hmm. you know, withdrew his hands. And created a way for him to break through every obstacle taken away by God. It was God's intervention, you know. And then before you know, he broke through. He broke through. And uh, unexpectedly, you are breaking through unexpectedly. It will be wow. Your enemies will be taken aback. They will be flabbergasted. In the name of the Lord, it will be amazing. Amen. And all the glory will be to God. In Jesus' mighty name. That's what we're saying this morning. You have to give your life to Christ. So that you can. Uh, you know, this dominion can be restored back unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus. So that's what we saw there in the scripture that has uh, that have read to us. And uh, le let me read Romans chapter 8. We'll bring in this uh, message to a close. You cannot play a second fiddle to the usurper of your destiny. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 29 and, 20 and 30. It says, For whom he for new he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Amen. If you are, if you are hearing this word of God this morning and it's meaningful to you and it's, uh, no, you are uh, in, uh, no, receive this word, and you act on this word, and uh, no, there will be a divine you know, uh, intervention. 
a divine encounter that will change your life. You no, know? in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that you hear the call. Anyone that the enemy has blocked their you no know, spiritual ears not to hear this call of God unto eternal life, this call of God unto glorious fulfillment of their destiny. I pray that the Lord will open their spiritual ears to get understanding of this message of God in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So I want to start to pray at this time without wasting time. I want to first of all pray for those who doesn't have that power and have not received that favor. They have not received that favor to be able to overcome the usurper of their, their, of their destiny. And we have traced it back to the, the Garden of Eden. Satan is the usurper of uh, the destiny of the humankind. When God created man, he wanted us to, he gave the whole heart to us to govern. But through disobedience unto the commands of God, commandment of God, man lost that dominion to Satan. He became the ruler of this world that has been uh, judged. But there was a need for another Adam. Hallelujah. And because of that, God himself became human. And we call him the son of God. And he came and defeated the devil. And restored back the dominion back to us. And he started all, uh, all the way from, uh, uh, you know, from uh, Adam. And that's why in the genealogy of Christ, in the book of, uh, uh, in the book of uh, Matthew, you know, in the book of Matthew, in the genealogy of Christ, the, uh, Perez was mentioned, but not Zera. Because Perez is the one that has a birthright. Birthright. I will read that one scripture again. Very important. Hebrews. And then uh, the, all we do now is, is to pray. Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12. It's, very, it's important to read this. Hebrews chapter 12. Reading the verse uh, 12. Verse 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Read about 12. It says, Therefore, uh, Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight the pass for your feet so that that which is lame may, be dis, uh, may not be dislocated but rather be healed. You know, make straight the path for, for your feet. The path of destiny, it takes prayers. The, you have to pray through in order to be able to break through. That's what we're saying. And if you don't have Christ in you, you cannot release the omnipotence of God. Prayer in the name of Jesus is the release of the omnipotence of God through human instrument. And it will crush and destroy every hindrance to your breakthrough in destiny. Perez means breakthrough. He broke through in destiny. You break through in destiny in the name of Jesus. And uh, let's see. Uh, it talks about uh, Esau here. He said, let there, be, let there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, verse 16 now of Hebrews 12, who for the muscle of food so this bet right for you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing he was rejected for he found no place for repentance though he sought it diligently with uh, tears he sought it diligently with tears so he sought his bet right you don't have to sell your bet right uh, sin unrighteousness man man having a sexual relationship with man it's not in the bible can men, when men have sexual relationship, can they bring forth a child? No. It's not possible. Marriage is between a man and a woman. So, but anybody, you have your, we have free moral agents. You know, nobody called, no, I'm not here to condemn you, I'm just telling you the word of God. And if you choose to say, okay, yes, I want to do man to man, you know, you meet the judgment with, of God. This is the word of God. You know, common sense tells us that a man and a woman, and a, a woman will produce, you know, children. But a man and a man, or a woman and woman, they cannot produce. That's what I'm telling you. So it's very simple. How can you lose your brain and lose your mind? Foolishness. The devil is a wicked one. Hallelujah. It's the shop of our destiny. You have to obey the word of God. Give your life to Christ. You are here to this morning. At the sound of my voice, and you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. I don't want to be confessing sins every week. We can day in day out committing sin and you go to the priest every week to confess your sin you have not forsaken no power to for, forsake but to them that receive you give the power to, to become the children of god say lord jesus give me the power to become the, the child of god i don't want to be a child of disobedience go to Ephesians chapter 2 i want to be a child of obedience because obedience is the key to me fulfilling my destiny have mercy upon me forgive me my sins lord jesus
Mm -hmm. I open my heart unto you. Come into my heart and be the Lord over my life. Save my soul in the name of the Lord Jesus. Save me, Lord Jesus. Christianity is not just a religion. It's not a mental phenomenon. It's about God in you. Open up. Say, come into my heart. Write my name in the book of life. Wash me clean in your precious blood. He shed his blood to redeem you. Redeem me from all my sins. Say, Father, I receive eternal life in Jesus' name. I receive eternal life in Jesus' name. Say, I receive eternal life in Jesus' name. So shall it be to you. Let me pray with you. Father, I never I pray for these individuals that are asking for eternal life through Christ Jesus. As they have faith in Christ for the saving of their souls, let them have a divine encounter that will save their souls. Let them know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ will they have sent it so they might have eternal life in the name of Jesus. I say receive eternal life. That individual, receive eternal life. Receive in the name of Jesus. The power of sin is destroyed in your life. Receive the power to go and sin no more. They receive the power to fulfill your destiny and to overcome the usurp of your destiny in Christ. In the name of Jesus, receive back your birthright as uh, a child of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now I want to go to the general prayers. You are here and there are things that God has put in your mind. You have some passion. No, when you have some passion for some things, they are not negative things, positive things that will add value to other fellow human. You know, that's your calling. That's God's purpose for your life. That's your the path of destiny in life. So, but there are obstacles. I pray for you this morning. You no, know, that every such obstacle be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I ask for God's divine intervention for you. As Perez, there is the, 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 the meaning of that name is breakthrough. As Perez received the intervention of God, God came through for him. The sum of his destiny withdrew his hand, and he was able to break through. He was able to, uh, you know, uh, burst forth to claim his birthright. He became number one. He, he, he became the heir apparent for Judah. I decree and declare also that every obstacle standing your way. To fulfilling your destiny, they are taken out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every hand of the enemy, like the hand of uh, Zerah, that's trying to heal you, obstruct you from fulfilling your destiny. Hand prophetically means power. Hand, when you talk of hand, the hand of God is talking of the power of God. When I talk of hand, it's talking of the power of the enemy unleashed to hinder you from fulfilling your destiny. I said, They win off, they win in the name of the Lord Jesus. Those sons are withered. You start to break through like never before. What you are has become difficult for you to be able to achieve. You start to break through and break forth effortlessly in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you. We appreciate you, Father. And if it's this sickness or disease that's trying to you know, dis make you disabled, so you won't be able to fulfill your destiny. I command that such infirmities be removed in your life in the name of Jesus. I bind every evil spirit. I like to torment you, afflict you, your life. I bind them in the name of Jesus. I cast them out by faith in the name of Jesus and say, Receive your miracle. Receive your breakthrough. Receive in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I will count it down in the name of Jesus. That's why Christianity is not a religion. We cast out devils. Say, In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, shall cast out. we cast out devils. Yes, it's only the power of Christ that can cast out devils. Every devil. To, you know, standing away because the devil is, is, is you suffer of your destiny. They are cast out in the name of Jesus. But you need to continue in Christ so that you can maintain your victory. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And make his countenance shine upon you. Don't forget uh, to share this message with other people. I'm looking forward to seeing you again on Tuesday. Tuesday, 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time. 9.30 uh, a.m. GMT UK time and 10 30 a.m. Nigerian time that's a longitude 15 degree east. We'll be meeting on Tuesday. We call it Miracle Tuesday with Christ. That's another time. And uh, Tuesday and uh, Saturdays we meet. Saturday is inside for the leading edge. God bless you. On behalf of my wife, Reverend Grace Leden, I am uh, Dr. Israel Leden, and uh, the entire membership and partners and leaders of. Uh, Leader Church International, we say thank you for joining us in this session of uh, Inside for Living. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. And goodbye. Bye for now.